Welcome to the Writer's Edge Podcast, a platform to share conversations about the health and wellness of horse and rider. I'm your host, Farley Schweigert. Hey y'all, it's Farley with the Writer's Edge Podcast, and today I get to spend some time with Donna K. Rule. Welcome Donna K. Thanks for coming back on. Hi, Farley. How are you today? Oh, fabulous. It's, it's, a, it's a fabulous Friday. We've survived the hurricane, and it's all good. Good. So, how, are, how are you, and where, where in the wild, wild west are you? I'm actually in the wild, wild west at uh, Dusty and Jennifer Barrett's house in Buell, Idaho. They're kind enough to host me and Valor and Rosie the Rodeo Dog for a few days while we wait in between rodeos wonderful wonderful well let's let's kind of dive in let's talk a little bit about the rodeo world 2020 because it is um it has looked as different and some things are the same as everything else in our world um now yeah it's it's quite different for me um it's you know i'm i'm careful not to drive too far or drive overnight um having one horse and just being by myself, uh, even though I've had a little bit of, uh, company this year, it's, it's different a long way in between and, uh, and then hurry and get to the next one. Um, interestingly though, you, you get there and it's very much normal at the event, uh, stopping for fuel and stuff and having a mask up. I, I definitely am that one that storms back to my truck thinking, oh, for gosh sakes, I forgot my mask again. So <laughs> a bit more exercise, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, everybody needs more exercise when they get out of driving for four or five hours and getting fueled up and going going back in. So, yeah. Yeah, it'll, it'll spunk you up and make you want to drive some more because you think, good grief, why can't I remember that? It's not that difficult. <laughs> And it's right there. <laughs> I put it there yes. so that I could get it easily so I wouldn't forget it. I hate it when I do that. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's um, you know, it's a definitely a different world with the, the committees that have been able to <clears throat> put on rodeos and continue on with the show and you know, a lot lots of committees. We're not able to, whether it be local restrictions or it, it just wasn't going to work, um, you know, I- anyway with um, different things going on in 2020. So, um, you know, how, how has all that kind of been um, working with everybody um, at, at, the, at the different rodeos? Because you've been, you've been out west for a good minute now. Yeah, yeah. Well, the first one was... Um, Cave Creek, and of course, everybody was so nervous uh, about what to do and what was expected and, uh, you know, a lot of controversy on signing things that that scared everybody, but, you know, nobody, nobody knew what to do, you know, it's not like you can say, well, the last time we had a pandemic, we, uh, we did A, B, and C, we, we don't have anything to go on, so everyone did the best they could, and, uh, people were so nice and, and so helpful and they, they tried so hard and they wanted us there and they wanted to do it right. Uh, Cowboy channel jumped in and was very helpful and provided everyone with masks at uh, cave Creek. And, you know, they were, they were kind about, you know, this is what we have to do and this is where you have to park. And uh, it actually, it actually went fairly smoothly. Yeah, that's great. And I kind of set up, you know, that set, set up the show for some, some semblance of, uh, summer <laughs> for everybody. And, um, you know, being able to see everything on the cowboy channel now, you know, with all the rodeos that are being televised, that's helped everybody that's been at home. Um, and I, and I think, feel like it's helped the committees because if they have been able to go, gosh, they've had a, a harder road to, to hold than, than in normal years. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of those places, you know, you you can't wait to get to because they have a hospitality there and and -and so-and-so always has barbecue and -and so-and-so always has steak and -and so-and-so has burritos or whatever, you know, and it, honestly, the community looks forward to that and look forward to meeting everybody and seeing everybody year after year. And that's been really difficult, you know, Uh, a lot of loneliness over that, you know, 
you travel up and down the road and you, and you like for myself I'm by myself a lot and it's a neat place to go and just sit down and have a real meal and stuff so kind of both sides you know it's been tough on uh, but they you know they found other ways to do it and hand out water and hand out masks so <laughs> I guess good trade good trade good trade or enough of a trade to, to keep everybody um, to keep everybody going for for sure so yeah. how how has how has Valor been holding up on the road this year? The, how's that worked out for you guys? Um, Valor's actually been a lot more comfortable this year. He's kept his weight on. He's he's confident. Um, you know, he was always been confident, but you know, it, it's stressful. Uh, and this year, he has just stepped up and stayed strong, and he stayed, you know four-legged as I often comment um, he doesn't have that uh, little hindrance of a, of a low tire here and there he's just been great um, and and stopping and getting meeting with the farriers I thank Dusty Franklin for setting me up with guys here and there Travis Swinson in Utah and Brian Nelson here in the uh, in the Idaho area just uh, just knowing I had quality farriers at every point I needed to has been wonderful as well. But yeah, he, I've added um, some stuff from Kentucky equine research. Uh, just, uh, Oh, it's uh, antioxidants and uh, muscle recovery things. And then some specialized electrolytes from them as well. And boy, I really feel like they've made a big difference for Valor this year. Oh yeah. He, he just, he looks, he, he just has a lot of bloom on him and, and he's feeling good and and you guys have been able to um have a you know quite a quite a bit of a success out there so i big difference for him this year no doubt yeah it's been successful we've been placing right along we haven't been just knocking home runs um but i tell you um everybody that's that's entered is everybody who's ever been anybody and it's tough my goodness sake tough from the very top to the very bottom um, but it's been so cool to watch great horses and I, you know, in any discipline, it's always good to watch a good one, but, uh, boy, to see them all gathered up and, and watch them run on different ground. It's really been a good education. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Cause that's, that's been a different aspect to, to this year. Cause er everybody's at the same place. It's not a, it's not a scattered, you know, this crew likes the Northwest, this crew likes the, the Kansas run and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's at the same place. And, you know, as you ask about the committees, you know, they, I think they've been blown away with the numbers and that's been a little difficult for them. But, you know, kudos to them. They've hung in there and tried to do their best to accommodate us. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because some of these smaller rodeos that have gone have, have never and may never have the numbers they've had this year again. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You, you go to some of them and those poor little guys at the gate, their eyes are big. and <laughs> They're lined up to try to get in and lined up to try to get out. And the little guy at the at the diesel pump, you know, he's there six deep at the town that has 500 people. They, they're just they're just loving it, I think, and, and they're scared too. So I don't know. It's been it's been pretty comical. <laughs> oh well, speaking of all the good horses in in all in one place, um, that always leads back to uh, you and I sit and watch because observation is is one of the greatest teachers. And uh, I think everybody wants to know what's what's the horsemanship secret. What's the um, What's the secret to success? And I thought today we could really, um, you know, kind of dive into that to, to your program and what you've done with Valor and Juice and, and other horses in the past. Well, the secret to success is, uh, it's just like that commercial on the Cowboy Channel that Dick Yates, there, there's no secret to success. The secret is to get out there and work at it. Um, learn every day and and learn by watching and learn by doing and learn by feeling. But in my program, uh, you know, I, I ride six days a week um, and I don't drill on my horses. You know, I, I often say that and then I fail to mention that I don't drill on them six days a week. I, I might on Tuesday, leave them off Monday and get on Tuesday and I might work on something I didn't like how they behaved the prior weekend. And then Wednesday, I might just get them out and brush them and, and ride one pony one. Um, 
I do a lot of things out in the pasture, way more than I do in the arena. And about everything I do pertains to a barrel turn. I want a perfect barrel turn. And that's, you know, that's the secret to outrun everybody. You got to get in and get out, you know. And, you know, the, the big secret is somebody asked me the other day and we go, well, I had a big laugh at it. And I looked left and left, looked right. And I whispered, the fastest guy wins. That's the secret. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you just spend your day trying to create the fastest turn and the fastest motion that you can get you know, on a, in a 17 second pattern. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, you, um, riding with you and, and hanging out, you, you're always, the, the truth of the matter is you are out in the pasture working towards that goal, whether it, it be around a rock or, um, dodging a bird dog or, <laughs> yes, <laughs> or <yeah>. whatever. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I mean, even like you talking about dodging the bird dog, the bird dog comes tearing out of the ravine and startles your horse. Very similar to a setup of a of a lady pushing a baby stroller suddenly into his vision. Mm -hmm. you know, the way you behave and react to that is the way you would behave and react to the bird dog in the pasture. So, you know, really anything can be a schooling moment. And, that, and that's a good one right there. A good example. <laughs> because everybody's always... Um, you know, looking for the next, uh, drill and the best drill. And, and I need, I need a drill to fix X, Y, Z on the pattern, or, you know, this drill will, you know, cut off, you know, this much time or whatever. And, and I think with you, as we're talking today, it's, it's literally about time, time in the saddle and with your horses and not, not drilling them into the ground and not just, just, hammering them yes for sure you know i often get the comment you know valor just stays so calm he just looks so confident well maybe it's not because i do anything extremely right but you're right i spend a lot of time just writing and understanding how he feels and how he reacts to things and recreating that you know hip up hip up underneath him shoulder not falling down on the turn and uh you know me you know, I work on that. I, I have to be, uh, I have to stay in the middle and not hinder him. So I work on me while I'm out there doing those things around rocks and trees and bird dogs. So yeah, there, you can learn and uh, recreate good things and good mental stability anywhere, you, anywhere on your horse, pasture or arena. Doesn't have to be a drill. Yeah. And even, you know, if, if you're somebody that's like, well, that's great. I don't have a, I don't have access to a pasture. I board my horse. I've got a nice arena here and that's it. You can still get creative in the arena with different activities and, and still get the same process uh, accomplished. Oh, for sure. You know, I've told a lot of people, you know, back when my husband and I, we were young and didn't have much and you know, I would fill up jugs, empty milk jugs with dirt and, and just use those as obstacles here and there and, and set up my approach to a quote unquote barrel for that. Or I might use a pole bending poles and lay them down and practice going over them just to just to make myself sit in the middle and, uh, you know, let my horse understand that I can guide you through things and help you and that you should count on me. Yeah, you don't have to have a pasture or 200 acres, you can have two acres and, and get an accomplished day in. Yeah. And it's even, um, you know, and it's even time outside of the saddle with your horses, right? I mean, it's, it's just, it's just time. It's just time spent. Oh yeah. Gosh, you know, I, I sit at my trailer often by myself at an arena with Valor tied to the trailer and, and I just sit there. I just sit there by him and, you know, it's almost just a moment of quiet communication, you know, just letting him count on me to be there for him. You know, that, that matters. That matters in a herd of horses. You watch them out in the pasture when they, two or three of them are out there, one's laying, two laying down, one standing up. They got one guy watching out for them. And, you know, sometimes you, you can learn from that, just knowing you need to be the guy standing up, and let him count on you. Doesn't have to be horseback every day. Yes. Yes. Cause a lot of, um, a lot of just hanging out with them on the ground, not, not horseback is really trying to tap into that herd mentality and understanding that and, and how you fit in your uh, relationship with your horse. 
Yeah. Yeah, like um, I was talking with a friend the other day, and her horse wants to stop and not go with her from point A to point B. You know, and she pulls and she pulls, and he's like, nah, you, you're not the herd leader. You know, so there's other things you can do at that moment. You can step toward him like another horse might, drop your head. You know, they might drop their head and, and gnash their teeth or lay their ears back. You can do the same, mimic the same thing, bend over a little bit, step toward him, and make him look at you like, oh, no, wait a minute, that that's a herd leader thing. I, I should listen. So, yeah, there's a lot of opportunities if you'll just watch for him to uh, interact with your horse and, you know, establish the hierarchy. Yes, because that, that's an that's an ebb and flow thing. Because I even find that with um, with Charlie, that if if I've been if I've traveled for a couple of days or done something, then he's like, na 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 na, you know, and kind of kind of go, goes off the program a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it turns out I've been by myself and I like me just fine. You're not the leader. <laughs> oh, wait just a minute. Let me remind you who the leader is. And you don't have to hit him. No. You don't have to spank him. You don't have to be aggressive, but you have to behave like you are the leader. Mm -hmm. You know, and then that lady that pushes the stroller out, he'll look to you for help first mm -hmm. before he panics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's the whole thing when you're trying to season a horse to rodeo in is, you know, not only getting them desensitized to things, but what is the process, the program, when, um, when ish hits the fan? You know, mm -hmm. who are they going to look to and, and how, how am I going to create that or create that relationship to, to have that system? Yeah. Yeah. In fact, going back to Cave Creek, um, you know, I spend a lot of time, as I was talking earlier in the, in the pasture and doing non-drill things. I, I teach Valor when, when my body's intense, it's time to come up and be ready and go. And then I soften occasionally out there and just drop my reins and relax and he's understands I'm up no everything's okay I need to stand up no everything's okay it's quiet so at Cave Creek they had the uh, TV going they called my name they introduced you know Minko Oklahoma blah 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 the uh, gate man waves me in like I'm late and I get my reins and I get ready to go and suddenly we have to take a five-minute commercial break mm huge huge thing for me to have that in place where I can bring him up and then just let him relax and he totally understood it and still we were second at Cave Creek because it didn't blow his mind oh my word I, yeah I didn't know about the the, the commercial break because I've you know, you've been at football games that have been on TV and they have to take a commercial break and stop things. But in the flow of a barrel horse, that, I mean, that, <laughs> that could wreck them. I will. I do have to admit I was not 100% sure how it would go, but I, I laid back on <laughs> my quote-unquote drill hoping that it would be okay. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> oh, tales from the rodeo rodeo trail. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, because if if not, I mean, you know, um, horses that are, don't have that process in place, they could have washed out and been totally flat for the run, and um, you know, on and on and on to to. Oh, oh my goodness. For sure, for sure. And honestly, that now that I think about it, that happened to me at Denver. When uh, Valor was not quite uh, rested up from the NFR, I took Juice to Denver because, uh, you know, that's all I had, of course. Right. And uh, we, uh, we are coming up the alley in full on, uh, you know, run, make a run, because I've, you know, I know Juice can't run as fast as Valor, so I'm, I've got him pretty fired up. And Butch Kirby steps out and stops me, and uh, the the timer had something had happened to the timer. Mm. Same situation. I slide him to a stop, drop the reins on his neck, and he just waited. Mm -hmm. And it was about a thirty second delay, mm -hmm. which is you know that's a good amount of time to get one to just lose his mind if you haven't had it in place. So I, I'm glad I I'm glad I know that and I have that available. Oh yeah, yeah, an absolute game changer because the the predictability um, for rodeo is I don't know probably a little bit like the weather. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> it'll, 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 it'll change in a minute, and then, and then we'll, we'll and move. Then what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then what? And then we'll move things so, around during the drill race because yeah, it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gosh, it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Yes, hopefully. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh, yeah. No, I just I really appreciate this conversation today because it it is it is time. It is you know um, we just had a uh, tropical storm. I still call it a hurricane because it it rained and wind and blew and uh, was a mess here. But you know on those days that you can't ride if you don't have an access to an indoor, it's doing stuff with them in the barn, whether it's just grooming or you know, walking them around, moving, moving their feet around you a little bit. Um, just, just time. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Uh, you know, there'll be some times when you can't and you, not everybody has a nice indoor, you know, and sometimes it's icy and you can't ride, but that is true. We spend some time out there and brush their legs and just stand by them and, uh, you know, put your hands on them. Just let them know you're there. So yeah, time is, uh, Time something that we don't often just give our horses. We're often, you know, drill driven. So I think that's a that's a good thing to add to a program is just some downtime and just some, you know, pal time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, I mean, you don't want to, you know, if you think about other things that you do in your life, you don't want to drill all the time when you see somebody. Like, you, you avoid the people that you know, make you uncomfortable and just, you know, are harsh. So it could be the same way with our horses. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point for sure. I never thought of it that way, but that is an excellent point. Yeah. So being out on the road, it takes, it takes a, <laughs> it takes a village <laughs> to be out on the road for any length of time. And I know you have um, a pretty good crew um in in your corner so you want to talk about them and um you know who helps you get down the road well i um uh, i'm very very grateful for uh aaron custer and cool speed feed uh, they approached me several years back maybe six or seven years ago and uh you know of course i'm the don't jump on the bandwagon girl and i kind of turned my nose up at him and um you know, I smiled and thanked him, of course, but I, I wasn't on it. But, uh, you know, we had a horse that had ulcers, and I agreed to try it to help her out. And, man, I Cool Speed has been on board with me, and they call and ask questions. They're very concerned. And, uh, you know, Aaron checks on me probably as much as my family does to make sure I'm doing okay out there. So I'm very, very appreciative of Cool Speed Feed. Uh, Five Star Pads, you know, they've been a great pad for I don't know how many years. Um, we've always used them, loved them when we roped, and uh, and of course now they have they have moved forward and and uh, they have beautiful colors and you know you can customize their things. So you know I love oh, and the they Five can, Star. Yeah, and then you can get as fancy as you want with them. What they're doing oh. with it, uh, you know, I I see that come across all the time. They're just beautiful as well yeah. as functional. And yeah, the the best wool you can get, and uh, they're just you know they're a little bit expensive, but gosh, I mean if you have one, you'll have it the rest of your life unless it blows out of the back of your truck. I mean that they last, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you yeah. know, and the minimal care, minimal care. So they're <laughs> I love their stuff, and and uh, Equiresp has been very helpful to help keep his lungs clean, keep him breathing good, and I appreciate them and. Uh, uh, Deanna Harrison's essential oils, you know, she has a huge variety of oils. Um, I've used the EPM uh, oils. I'm currently not using those but uh, because I don't need them, but I use the uh, several of her things. One she's got is called Morphine Balm, which has not got morphine in it, but it's it's a kind of a pain relief thing, and I've really used it a lot in the Mega Air that helps the lungs. And yeah, that Morphine Balm you've used on both you and Valor. Yes, I smashed the soup out of my thumb and tore my thumbnail off about three hours before I ran last year at Colorado Springs, and I didn't have anything in my treader, and I thought, that can't hurt. I'll try it, and I put that morphine balm on my thumb, and I'm telling you, I ran the fastest time of the week there, you mm -hmm. know, so mm -hmm. it, it helps so much. Well, and, and she, did a, she did a podcast earlier this spring that people can check out and really breaks down the... Um, 
the theory behind essential oils and, and how um, she puts things together. Yeah. And it's not the essential oil thing. You know, you can turn your nose up at it thinking it's just the, some kind of voodoo -y stuff, but, but that stuff's real, you know, mm -hmm. it's been around forever and she definitely studies it and, and knows what will help. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I've been I've been sure happy with that. Um, the Kentucky Equine Research is new for me this year, but I I have been delighted with their product. Um, the antioxidant and the race recovery is a electrolyte that's uh, specifically designed for horses that that do big stuff like we do, and and excellent for horses that are bleeders. If you have a bleeder, um, because of the uh, the way that uh, the electrolyte is delivered. It's not just for a horse that sweats. It helps the whole body and helps everything kind of get back together and line back up and balance back out. And then uh, also Owl Manor, uh, you'll have to ask your vet about it, uh, a ProStride. And it is a uh, similar to a, an IRAP situation, but a little stronger, a little more anti-inflammatory factors in it and uh, where they draw out the blood and they send it through a particular process and inject it back into the joints where it's not a chemical and uh, does have anti-inflammatory properties and boy, your horse is more comfortable, everything works and his body helps him instead of injecting a bunch of chemicals. So, yeah, oh, so those, yeah. All of those have been so helpful. Yeah, absolutely. And then you, Bonnie, have been so helpful for me because I am not <laughs> modern day Millie on the social media thing. I have been very grateful for your help on that. So uh, thank you. You're most welcome. You're most welcome. And uh, let's give a, a shout out to Classic Equine as well. Yep, I was going to get to that one too. They just come out with a, a flex uh, flexion boot. I wear uh, all the way around on Valor and. Um, he'll he'll kind of go through some boots you know because he's so strong and so powerful and these have a really neat flexible uh support system behind the the fetlock area and um, i'm really liking those so classic equine thank you for that oh yeah yeah i meant to i meant to ask you how you felt about that new boot because i really i've liked the looks of it um and and especially since i've been studying that more with all of uh, charlie's issues <laughs> as as yeah. well so i really yeah, yeah. and I, I like the flexibility of it you know several of their boots have been great quality but um but i wasn't completely sold in this particular individual on the flexibility of some of them although i still used them on all my other horses i i struggled with them on this horse but the the new flexion fits him it's comfortable. It doesn't rub him. It doesn't tear. I've, I've been real pleased with this one. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Cause they're, they're a great company and all the, the products and the thought process and time they put into what they're doing. Oh yeah. And they listen to you. You can say, I, I wonder about so-and-so. I wonder about this strap. I wonder about that. And they, yeah, I mean, they listen and they want it right. They want your horse to feel good. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So any, anybody else in your village? I think, I think we've, did we, did we cover, did we cover the whole crew? Oh, we've covered quite a bit. Gosh, I, there's so many people I need to thank. And, and if I thanked everybody, we'd be here a week and <laughs> if I one and leave one out, I would feel terrible, but absolutely. you know, I appreciated Cindy Smith hopping in with me and sharing a couple of, a couple of trips out and back and, you know, the people I've got to stay with and, uh, you know, camp on their doorstep for a while. I, I just am so grateful. You just don't have any idea how much it means to to have a port in the storm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what's great about the, the rodeo road and community that um, you build relationships and um, and then you build new relationships with friends of friends uh, right. and get connected. Yeah, and it means a lot. It sure does. Uh, Dusty and Jennifer Barrett, you know, here I am in their yard for five days. I'm sure they're going to be tired of me and happy. They're going to wave when I leave because they're going to be happy to see me go, but I, <laughs> I'm grateful they let me stay. <laughs> and then Jack Witcher family there in, uh, in the Mile City area, you know, we stayed there several days. So that was just sure enough grateful for them as well. Yeah, because that's been a dynamic that's changed that, you you know, in the past you might be there a day, two tops, uh, and now 
you know, you're having to find places to stay, you know, three to five days or even longer in between rodeos. Oh, yeah. And because of COVID-19, uh, a lot of the county and state facilities are locked up. You can't get in there. Mm, yeah. Yeah. When well, That's you, been a new dynamic for the year. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't, I've, I'd forgotten about that. Cause that, <laughs> that changes the game as well for yeah. traveling. So. Yeah. Yep. Very grateful for the, for the families that have allowed me to be there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for spending time on the podcast today. Um, it's taken us, uh, uh, I knew we want, I knew I wanted to do this time conversation with you, but gosh, it's taken us a long time to, a long time to get it, a time to do it. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Between driving and, and, and running, there hasn't been a great time. So this was perfect. <laughs> yes. So thank you so much for coming on today. Thanks, Farley. It was fun. Thank you for listening to Rider's Edge Podcast. For show notes and other thoughts, head over to ridersedgetherapy.com. If you would like to stay connected and continue the conversation, head over to my free Facebook group, Rider's Edge Health and Wellness for Horse and Rider. Thanks for continuing the conversation, and as always, I will see you down the road.